holy, holy land.
God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Have you ever been to the ranch and felt like this? You have entered the set free zone.
Okay. Okay.
Amen. Okay. Today, I've just been praying about, you know, imparting something to us from God's Word, because I don't know about you, that you know, just, just like there's seasons of life, there's, just like there's seasons, you know, in, in, in the world, you know, like there, there's springtime when everything seems to come alive, and summertime when all that life really just seems to team and really get crazy, and, and then there's autumn when it seems to wane back down, and it seems... And then there's winter time sometimes and everything seems like it's dead. Seems like you look out and there's no life and you know, you run outside and you know what I mean? There ain't nothing. There's no leaves on the trees and the grass is brown and you know, you're listening for the birds chirp and you don't hear nothing. There ain't even a cricket. You know what I mean? And uh, so I, I wanted to think about something that would give us kind of like the change, or bring a change about in our lives. Something that would, that would give us new life, that would breathe new life, that would breathe new warmth. Something that would bring a new freshness. In the, I, I, I need it myself. What about, what about you? You've been kind of wore out lately? You're kind of wore out? Same thing, same old, same old, same people. The people are wearing you out. <laughs> Come on, tell the truth now. You deal with people, you're dealing with people, man. Where's you out? So I read this, I, I, I because I read through the Bible a couple times a year, and I caught that, I'm reading through Isaiah, and I caught this, and I'm like, wow, it slapped, it slapped me hard. So I'm going to share it with you. It's, it's Isaiah, it's just one verse, as well. we're, we're going to read, it, 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 stuff like this causes me, because sometimes I hear stuff, and, and then I say, it, it, and it's the way it's worded, and it's, it's, that, it's worded that way on purpose, the Holy Spirit made sure of it, okay? So we, it says, arise... Comma. What does com What does a comma mean? Pause. It's a separation between the two words. There's there's a separation and a pause. Arise. Shine. Notice how there. And then there's a semicolon, which, which is a continuum of the thought. Okay, but it's adding something. And it says, for thy, your, your, thy means your, for thy light has come. And the glory of the Lord is, not might, is, is risen upon thee. Man, I'm like, huh? Then how come I feel like this? If the glory of the Lord is risen upon me, how come I still feel like this? And I saw, so I blacked up and I, you know, it's the dawn of a new day. You know, the every day, you, you know, when Bill Bright died, because I love Bill Bright. I, I really, I study and I read as much as I can from him. I love his teachings. They're so simple. You know, he, he doesn't get all the, all, you know, he, he doesn't try to go beyond the depths of where the whole, you know, he, 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 try, he doesn't try to explain things that aren't explainable. And that's what most theologians do. <laughs> Because there's a lot of scripture that we're never going to understand. You know, how do you take an infinite God and stick him in my little pea brain? He don't fit. <laughs> but the Bible says that we're supposed to be filled with all the fullness of God. And I'm like, <laughs> wow, something, something, something major, something critical, something really drastic has to happen. If that is going to happen, brother, brother, I'm the one preaching here. Okay, thank you. God bless. Okay, so I look at this. It, 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 if if problems are just opportunities to give God glory, we have a lot of opportunities, don't we? Listen, it, he, he said, because that's Bill Bryce. He, he, three days before he died, he was dying of pulmonary fibrosis, which means his, his lungs were turning and solidifying. He couldn't, he couldn't breathe. The, 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 his lungs weren't oxygenating his blood. And, and three days before he died, he, he made this statement. He goes, he goes, I don't have problems in my life. I only have opportunities to give my Lord glory. And I'm thinking to myself, this dude's laying in bed dying. And he's saying he don't have no problems. What's wrong with me? I complain about everything. My shoes are too tight. My socks are too tight. My t-shirt got a hole in it. You know. Ooh, that's too salty. Put too much salt on my pants. You know. 
I mean, wah. Sound familiar? Okay. I wonder, I wonder, so, so if problems are just opportunities, then, then I wonder what, if there really is a message in this for you and me, you know, because, because I, the Lord knows us. You know, the Lord not only loves us, but He knows us. I mean, He knows you. I mean, fully. There's nothing He does not know. If He knows your thoughts before you think them, then He knows your feelings before you feel them. And He knows your sins before you do them. And He still loves you. Okay? So having said that, I think this word here, he's trying to inspire us. He's, what is he trying to tell us here? Is it, what would he say to lift us up above these, these days of winter that are dark and cold? Because darkness, darkness and, and coldness separate people. Can't get warm. I'm so cold. I'm so cold. And you try to warm them up. You know, you give them a jacket. Most people don't want to hug. You try to hug them, and they're like, all right, that's enough, you know. Let's see, you can tell exactly who they are, too. Well, you know, it's a, if it's certain people, they're, they're fine, but most of us, they, you know, see you later, you know. And that's okay, but, but, but the Lord wants to speak a word that will carry us forward, not only forward in progression of our lives, but He wants to, he wants to give us a word that will lift us up as we move forward. Because it, the Bible says he's the lifter of our head. He's the lifter of my head. He wants to lift us up. Okay, so having said that, uh, I said, may, maybe this little word here, maybe this word here, maybe the, what he spoke to us just now is a word that will give us unfailing faith, undying hope, and an unending love. But we missed it because we don't really study. We didn't break the scripture down. So that's what I did. I, I broke it down for me because I needed something. I felt all cold. I felt separate. I've been griping. I've been barking at people. I've been chewing people. Out, you know, and I, and I, I, I when I get in, in this winter season, I get like that. When I get, I get grumpy. I'm, I'm hard to deal with. Just ask Pastor Jeff. He'll tell you. No, I'm just, but anyways, he said this word. He said this word to me. He said, arise. Huh? See, he said, arise. And I'm looking at this whole scripture. I'm going, wait a minute, but, but I want that light part. He goes, wait a minute. You got to follow directions. I'm like, oh. See, because most of us, us Christians, us believers, we want to do the least and get the most. It's the truth. We don't want to have to make the effort. I want to just shine. I don't want to have to get up. I don't want to have to get up. Look, you got to get up your butt. Arise. You got to get out of bed. Get out in front of the TV set. Quit hanging around with those turkeys. You're never going to soar with the eagles when you're running with the turkeys. I'm just saying. <laughs> Listen, arise. Arise. Listen, arise. It's a word that... It's a, it's a word that if you think about it, 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 it it's, pointing me, it's pointing me to something way more noble than I'm capable of. Because Jesus said, I'm supposed to let my light shine before men that people would see my good works and glorify God in heaven. But wait a minute. I'm like in a winter season right now. I'm kind of cold. I'm kind of... I don't want you know. I don't want to have to deal with you right now. You know, I mean, I've been hugging people, and I'm hugged out. Quit thinking like that, man. Quit thinking. Arise, arise, so you can shine. Wait a minute. What's he telling me? Look, the, the, this scripture here is filled with great power. It's pure. It's filled with the power of light. It's filled with the power of God's glory. It's filled with the power of faith. It's filled with the power of courage. It's filled with the power to be able to do what you couldn't do before. Okay. And what is that? What is that? It's a, you got you to get up. You got to arise. You got to arise in your spirit. You got to rise up for God. You got to arise. 
Not just physically. You've got to arise mentally. You've got to get out of that rut. Look, if we need to call a tow truck, we'll, we'll help you out. <laughs> You went off the cliff. You went off in a rut. Now you're stuck in the rut. Well, that's okay. We got a well, Jesus got a tow truck. He wants to pull you out of the muck and mire. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? He wants to pull you out of the, the what? But but wait a minute. Why why do I want to arise and shine? He says because your light has come, huh? It's already here, dude. Hey, girl, it's already here. You don't have to wait no more. But you got to do your part first before God's going to do His. You're not going to lay around and get it. You're not going to still go be you. You're not going to go, oh, sneak out and drink that little short dog. Or you're going to go do your 40, 40, 40. I'm going to have a, I'm going to go drink me a 40. And then the, by the time you drank 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, and you're sloppy, stupid. You know, and you thought, oh, I'll, I'll just, I'll just drink a little. I'll be, I'm just going to drink 140 and you wind up drinking 10 of them. Because that's what you do all the time. You got to arise up from that. You got to arise up from that stinking thinking. You got to arise up from that bond. You got to arise up from where the devil's holding you. Just not too long. You got to go back and take back what the devil. You let the devil rip you up, and now it's you. God says you got to go get it back. He not he not gonna go. He'll he'll get some of it, like your family, and he'll bring it back. You know God God does that with your family because he's a family man. See, our Father in Heaven had a son. And he's not going to... But then, but then again, he can give you your family back, but if you don't do your part, you're going to lose them again. Because you're the dad. You're the one... You're the breadwinner. You're the one that's supposed to be taking care of the kids. Not mama. Not the oldest son. Papa. Daddy. Father. Meet your response. Arise! But you don't understand, Pastor Eric. I got all these felonies. So do I. I'm, I was drug addicted and felony convicted and untouchable. But I can't say that today. I got a whole list of people that hire convicted felons. You didn't talk to your PO. You didn't even talk to your PO. Your PO, I got the list from your PO. <laughs> Duh. How you like me now? But you don't understand, Pastor. Yes, I do. I live my own way. My own. It, it's time for you to try it someone else's way. Your way didn't work, obviously. It got you busted, disgusted, and maladjusted, and now you can't be trusted because you played Frank Sinatra, and you did it your way. You know, whatever. You know, I did it my way. <laughs> Listen, arise. To, to, to something that God wants to do. Listen, the, the, the word that dares, listen, it says your light has come. This word dares, dares us to a life of action. Arise, shine. How do I shine? I let my good works, I got to get out there and let people see me doing good. For God, not for me, for Jesus. And it's, it's, not that, it's not that hard. Just quit, th quit being you. <laughs> yes, you, you can. You know how I, I, I get it every day. When I'm on the way to the, when I, when I, when I leave my house, the first thing out of my wife's mouth is, you play nice, Ray. <laughs> she knows me. <laughs> so all the way to church, I'm praying, oh Lord, fill me with your spirit. Fill me with your, I'm absolutely no good unless you fill me with your spirit, Lord. I'm going to blow it unless you fill me with your spirit. Lord, you know me better than anybody. Unless you fill me with your Holy Spirit, I'm going to do something stupid. So please fill me with your Holy Spirit. Please fill me. Remember, I preached a whole sermon about how do you get, how do you get filled with the Holy Spirit? You ask. God made it so simple. But you got to remember, you got to ask and keep on asking and don't stop asking until you get it. But that, that entails a whole lot of surrender in the meantime. Okay, God, I know I'm mad at this person, but I won't be mad anymore. I forgive him. Not. Well, okay, I'll, I forgive him, I forgive him, I forgive him, I forgive him, I forgive him. You know. Whatever, whatever, listen, whatever is not of faith is sin. Whatever is not of faith is sin. 
Arise, get those faithless things out of your life. You can't smoke a cigarette by faith. <gasps> I'm, not trying to, I'm not trying to rain on your potty. I'm just trying to teach you the truth. And you could go, most of us, you know, I know a lot of people, they go, they, they could go home and have a beer with their family, you know, and then go home and they're okay. But most of us, we can't do that no more. Quit thinking you're going to, oh, quit thinking, oh, it's gonna, I'll just have one beer. Nah, you won't, no, you won't. But you're just going to have 140 and you drank 10 of them. Just like the day before and the day before that and the day before that. And no tell. And by the time you got three or four of them down, you you smoked a couple joints and then did line or whatever else they brought. What are we going to learn? We got to rise up inside. I got to give my life to Jesus, and I need to rise up. I need to arise because there's no way I can shine if I don't leave me behind. If I rise up, I got to leave me behind. You know what I'm talking about? Okay. Listen. Notice the specific order of these words. Arise. Shine. Like I said, the implication is that if we do our part first, God's going to do His part, but He's waiting for you to do yours. What is it in your life that doesn't give God glory? You'll never be able to shine if you're doing stuff that goes against what God says in His Word. If you're, that, that's why it's so that, that Jesus' family came to see Him, His mom and His brothers and sisters, and, and they said, hey, your family's outside. Your mother, your brother, and your sisters are out here to see you. He said, who are my mother, my brothers, and my sisters? But those who do the will of my Father in heaven. Oh, wow. Wow. So, listen. The Lord will see to it. If we arise to the best of our ability, now we're always going to fall short. We're always going to fall short. And I hear this so, I hear this so often. I, I, I'm going to deal with something right now. Yes, we, are, we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But don't quit using that as a crutch to sin. Quit using that as a crutch so you can go get high. Because it ain't. It ain't. Listen. If you, if you repent, there's a difference between not being able to stop what you're doing and doing it anyway. Now, if you're stuck in an addiction that you can't stop, we have a place to go that will get you out of the addiction. But listen, you've already had that addiction broken off you how many times at that place? And you keep going back to it. Well, the Bible says a dog returns to his vomit. I don't know about you. I've seen dogs do it. And then when they have puppies, they eat poop too. It's terrible. And then they want to kiss you. And then they want to go. Like, Shekinah, no way. You have like seven pups. In the... Seriously. Listen, shine. You know, the, 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 listen. I don't, I don't know about you, but I get this kind of response when I counsel people in this, and I, I like, and I can even I can even hear myself making excuses. Well, okay, you know, but first it would really be a, a real blessing if you could shine me first before I got up. That way I could, if you let me shine now, that way. You, you know, you know what we do when we're when we do that to the Lord. We're telling Lord, if, if we could just do my will instead of yours, it would be cool. Not. I'm preaching pretty good here, you know. I'm, I know because it's chopping me to pieces. Listen, he said, "Lord, if you light me up, then I'll take a stand and I'll serve you." The Lord goes, "No. You take a stand. You rise up and you serve me, and I'll light you up." In other words, arise and shine. Listen, this is what I believe the Lord is saying for this new day today. Not for tomorrow, not for yesterday. Yesterday's history, tomorrow's a mystery. 
The only thing that we have is happening today. It's happening right now. And this is the message for today. What is the Lord saying to you and me? Let's develop a theme with one thought in mind. God, God wants us to experience His presence so that we will take His presence to those who do not know Him so they can receive what we receive. But Pastor Ray, see, that's why I say, that, that, that's why I, I, you hear it so much, you say, oh Lord, uh, Go and preach the gospel and use words if you have to. Well, there's a lot of truth to that. Because if you go start beating people up with words and telling them, well, you better give your life to Jesus, you're going to go to hell. You know what I mean? That, that, that never worked with me. It didn't work with you. After a while, it pisses you off. Or it makes you, pardon me, I'm on the internet. It makes you angry. And it drives you people away. So, so I would encourage you to, to go rise up and let your, and shine. And wait for the moment when the Lord gives you the opportunity. Because even though they come to you, and even though they're asking the questions, and even though they've been back several times, doesn't mean it's time for you to tell them yet. Okay? Listen, God said, God said in Genesis 1-3, God said, let there be light. Did you know that? And you know what the Bible says? And there was light. God said, and there was. Period. Okay. So these are the first words that we have on record of God speaking. And there's far more here than we may realize. Because, you know, when, when, in the beginning of the Bible, there's a, like, how did God create everything from nothing? I don't know. How did he speak the light into the darkness? I don't know. What was the light? It wasn't the sun. He didn't create the sun and the moon and the stars until day four. We're, we're talking about day one here. He hadn't created the sun. Well, the sun's what gives us light. No, God's what gives us light. But what does that mean? I like it. What does that mean? Listen, listen. It, it, it's kind of like trying to explain something that's unexplainable. Eugene Peterson <coughs> said it's like trying to paint a picture of a bird in flight. You know, you can get a two-dimensional picture of a bird that's in the sky but you miss his wings moving and you miss the gracefulness and the aerodynamics of what God did in the bird that actually makes him zoom through the air. Because most of them birds, they're like, whoosh. I mean, I've had birds, there's this little hummingbird that loves me. In my, I go in my backyard and, and he'll whoosh, right up in my face. And he'll like, hey, what's up, dude? You know, and he just, he just, he loves me. I don't know why. But I'm like, hey, dude, what's up? You know, and he's like, oh, oh, oh. you know, and I don't even have a hummingbird for years, you know, but he loves me. But how do, you, how, how do you explain that to somebody? Okay. Especially somebody that's never seen a hummingbird. Okay. Our, our attempts to define and explain uh, that which is a full constant motion are blurred at best. But let me, let me give you my, I'll give you my best effort right now. Consider on day one of creation, God said, let there be light and there was light. He did not create the sun, the moon, the stars until day four. Therefore, the phrase, let there, be, let there be light, does not mean sunshine. Okay, what does it mean? Listen, the only way we can know for certain is to let the Bible itself tell us what it means. Okay, so if we're paying attention to how the Bible uses certain words like in the beginning and light, See, when was the beginning? I don't know, but there was a beginning. I just know there was a beginning. When was it? I don't know. Was it 7,000 years ago? I believe so. Was it 100 billion zillion years ago? I don't know. We'll have to ask them when we get there. And then again, it won't even matter. Okay? Therefore, the, 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 the only way that we can know for certain is when we pay attention to how these phrases go. If we fast forward to the New Testament, it says in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Well, in the beginning, God spoke the light in the darkness, and in the beginning was Jesus. Wow. From this we know, see, and after that, this we know, 
Because it's, it's that John 1, 1 clearly states that. But if we jump down to verse 14, it says, and then the Word became flesh. Well, when did the Word become flesh? It wasn't in the beginning. <laughs> get it? You know, you get where I'm going with all this? See, there's a lot of stuff in the Bible that it doesn't explain itself, but you have to believe it by faith. Okay? So, so for uh, another place John writes, uh, he, he, well, I, I jumped down too far. I mean, I digress here. From this we know when God speaks, when, when God speaks, what He says comes to pass. Okay, and having said that, Genesis itself bears out God said it and it was so. The phrase occurs eight times in the first chapter of Genesis. In another place, John the Revelator writes, And this is the message that we have heard from him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. That's 1 John 1, 5. And a few pages later in chapter 4, he says God is love. He, first he says God is light. And then twice in the fourth chapter, verse 8 and verse 16, he says God is love. Well, what is he? He's both. Is he, is God love or is God light? He's both. He's God. Uh, it was so cool. Uh, let, let me tell you, He's God. And he can be whatever He wants to be. Amen. So, having said that, if God is light and God is love, right here, John puts two things together. He puts the literal and the metaphorical together. Okay. It doesn't happen a lot, but if you look at it, listen to me now. Okay, what, what do I mean by that? Okay, God is love. That's literal. God is love. That is literal. I experience that daily in my own life. Because if God, God wasn't love, I would have been a puff of smoke a long time ago. Somebody probably would have stuck me in their pipe and went, you know what I mean? But listen, when it says God is light, that's metaphorical. How can I know that? But, but, what, but if you break down the meaning, they both mean the same thing. What do I mean by that? Th this means that everything that happened from day one, okay, thus day one, God in the beginning said, let there be light, and there was light. And, and I believe this, if God is light and if God is love, when He spoke light into the darkness, He was speaking. What he did was he gave a physical manifestation of the metaphorical manifestation of his love for us. He gave us light. Because we walked in darkness. We lived in darkness. We practiced darkness. We did darkness. We enjoyed darkness. Until it got so heavy we couldn't do it no more. And then God brought light and changed. Whoa, wait a minute. Every, you know, as I'm learning the seasons in life, why do the seasons happen? Because every seven years, biologically, you change. And if you're not growing, and if you're not better now than you were before, then there's a problem. If you're still struggling with cuss words, if you've been in the Lord for all these years and you still have a problem loving people and you're still cussing and you're still a periodic user, you might want to really take a look at your life and ask yourself, am I really rising up for God? Am I really, am I really letting God do all He wants with the life that He's given me? Because this ain't my life. Somebody posted on Facebook about somebody that had lost everything. And they said, well, this could be you in just a short period of time. I said, how could it be me? Because everything I have belongs to Jesus. I will never lose everything in my life again because it ain't mine. <laughs> I'm so grateful. You can have my house. You can have my Harleys. You can have my... At least leave me one guitar so I can jam for the lamb. Okay, you know what I mean? Listen, all I know is that when God wants something to happen, it happens. 
He said, let there be light, and there was light. Okay? So that everything that happened from day one to the present hour has a singular purpose. You know what that, you know what that purpose is? From the very first thing God did in creation. And his purpose for all creation, especially for us, is to reveal his love to creation. To bring his light and his love to everything that sucks air. Whether it's an animal or a manimal. <laughs> Just saying. Be careful with set free, our sheep have teeth. <laughs> and tattoos. Okay. Listen, so... Let there be light. Genesis 1. In the beginning, God said, let there be light. These four words, they like sum up the entire Bible. If you really, listen, it, say, it says, it, it serves the purpose. Everything that follows this first sentence does so to serve the purpose of fulfilling the light he brought into the darkness. Okay. He made a decree that has not been changed unto this day. His will is that the revelation of his love is seen in everything that he has made. See, he already has a gap in heaven where he had to discipline. Even though he loved, he still had to discipline and cast out. See, that's what makes God a just God. It's because God is holy. Because God is, in fact, He's holy, holy, holy. And because God is holy, 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 He can't leave the guilty unpunished. He has to be, the, He has to bring justice. But when we rise up, all that stuff goes away. Because He brings light and He brings love. Listen, what happens when you turn on the light? Everything that's not supposed to be there splits. Especially if you live in San Bernardino, you know what I'm talking about. You don't sleep on the floor in a San Bernardino apartment. You don't. You wake up covered in roaches. And, and, you, and you, you'll have none of them during the day. You'll see your, your, your house is cleaner than clean. They all come in, they all invade from the neighbors. It's just sad. It's weird. I, I know so, you can always tell somebody that's experienced it. Yep. Listen, let there be light. God wants us to turn the light on because it chases the roaches away. You know what I'm talking about? All the stuff in your life, you don't, all you got to do is bring light. Because when you bring light, you bring love. Amen? God wants us to come to know that being loved by Him is the greatest thing that we could possibly to receive. The love that He want, has for us is the greatest thing we could receive. And all He wants us to do is respond in kind. You know, even though He created you in His image and likeness, there's only one thing, there's only one thing that He does not have. The God that has everything does not have your heart unless you give it to Him. Because he made you like himself and he gave you that free will to choose. And, listen, in the garden, our first parents were placed there with a, with, a, with a revelation of God's love for them. The bounty of blessings and the nearness of his presence. I mean, I read, I, sometimes when I'm really struggling, because I, I really wanted to know what life was. See, in, in, the New, in, in the Bible, there's two different words for life in the New Testament. One is bios, and the other is zoe. It's where we get the words biology and zoology. Okay. Well, bios is where we get the word biological. It's this body, the biological. But th this biological life can be taken. But the zoe life can't. Because that's the part that's created in God's image and likeness. Okay. It's where we get the, it's the study of all life is zoology. That's the, it is, the study of human life is biology. The study of all life is zoology. Okay. 
So having said that, God wants us to know, okay, that God walked with Adam and Eve in the garden. They got to run around buck naked and not be ashamed. I don't know about you, that sounds really attractive to me. And I'm not a nudist by any means. You know what I mean? But the no shame part. You know what I mean? Uh, listen, the paradise from which we've fallen is the, is the paradise to which we aspire. Did you hear me? The paradise from which we have fallen is the paradise to which we aspire. And what is that? Do you know? It has nothing to do with a stupid garden and, and a dumb tree that has fruit, that has fruit loops. <laughs> but it has to do with who's in the garden with us. Get it? They live in God's presence with no shame, no fear. And with only one thing they weren't supposed to do. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Man. Think about that for a, for a day or two. Man. There was only one thing Adam and Eve couldn't do, and they couldn't even handle that. <laughs> they couldn't even handle that. Okay? Listen. What, what, I, I don't know why they would choose so poorly and get banished from a paradise so beautiful. You know what I mean? There's only one thing they couldn't do and they still made a poor choice. What does that say about human nature? And by the way, that points to all of a human Are you human? Guess what? You have the same tendency to choose that same choice. Just like I do. Only the power of the Holy Spirit keeps us from choosing. Amen? Listen. And then God in His ultimate mercy and His ultimate love and then the grace that He's always had for us since the beginning. He slaughtered two innocent animals and He covered up their sin. Do you know how He covered up? Do you know why? Do you know why He covered them up? Because they knew they were naked. Up to that point, they didn't even know they were naked. Listen, I don't know about you, but that that the that that kind of offering, that that kind of blessing, that you know, and then 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 when he kicked them out of the garden, you know, he he didn't he didn't pronounce all these weird things on them. You know, he, he said, look, girl, when you have kids now, it's going to hurt like a mother. Sorry about that. You know, and, and he said, you, dude, he goes, you know, from now on, when you work on the ground, you know, I, I, I put you in a really nice garden. From now on, you're going to have to deal with thorns and thistles. If, you, if you're from San Bernardino, you're going to have to deal with goat heads. You know what goat heads are? The big old things, you get them sticker bushes, and they get really big and and like me, when I was a kid, I used to run around with bare feet. I loved running around with bare feet. And I'd get stuck right in the middle of one of them six-foot stickers. I'm like, oh, God, you got to oh, 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 oh. Then your feet hurt for a week, you know. Listen. That, and then God said, be fruitful and multiply. Subdue the earth and fill it. In other words, go have kids. And a lot of you guys did really good with that. A lot of you guys did really good. Now, he meant to do it with one person, but that's okay. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll deal with that in another sermon. Amen. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but anyways, but he, I mean, the, the, he kicked them out of paradise. And, and he told them to, to, go, to go take care of the world, to go, to go multiply and, and and to enjoy his natural blessings. That's not really that's not really a curse, you guys. We think it is. Well, we're fallen. I think I think the bad choice was more of a curse than what God did. Okay, L listen. If we look more, if we look a little deeper, as mankind multiplied and increased in the earth. God chose this guy named Abraham. 
Well, his name was Abram back then. And if, if you look at Abram, he really wasn't, you know, he, he chose this normal guy who was kind of a wishy-washy, you know, not wholeheartedly obedient until he got a little older. Well, you got to remember, he was 75 years old when he started. And it wasn't until he was 80 years old that he really got it. Because God told him to leave his family, leave the land and leave your family behind and go to the land that I will show you. Well, he took his father, Tira, with him. And you know what Tira means? Complainer. <laughs> so they, went, they, they moved out of the land and he could only go so far. They only went so far and they stayed there five years. They could only go so far for five years because they had a complainer. And when the complainer died, God came back and moved him on. So remember that when you're complaining about stuff in your life. Just remember, remember, Israel was only supposed to be in the wilderness 11 days, and they went up there, they were in the wilderness 40 years because they complained. How long do you want to be in the wilderness? And how soon do you want to go to the promised land? I'm just saying. Okay. Listen, he said, Abraham, you go do this, and I'm going to make you a great nation. You're going to have so many descendants that there'll be more than the stars in the sky or more than, more than the sand on the shore. Why would God do that? Why do you think God did that? So they would see that God had a people that he had chosen that he took care of. That there really was a God that loves us. There really was a God that cared. There was a God that, that not only cared so much, but he wanted to provide for us. He wanted to take care of us. And he did that with Israel. He did that. The giving of the law at Mount Sinai, what, what, what everybody thinks, oh, it, was, it was just a revelation of his love. He, listen, he, what he did was he took a tablet and he downloaded the Ten Commandments from the cloud. And he wrote them with his finger. Come on, you guys. I mean, that, was, that was pretty good. You know. So, so then he gives them the Ten Commandments and knowing, knowing that they're not going to be able to keep them. Remember, he knows us. He knows us. Even if we're not willing to admit it, he knows everything about us already. And he knew they weren't going to be able to hack it. He knew they were going to complain. He knew they were going to get stuck in the wilderness. And he loved them anyway. Are you getting any idea how to arise inside yourself now? You getting any, any idea how to arise in your spirit? Are you getting it yet? Are you? Listen, the, the sending forth of prophets, the sending forth of seers, teachers, priests, judges, kings, they were all expressions of God's great love for us. He raised the standard of living. He built them into a beacon for the world to see His love. Not ours. His. He, the brightest light was yet to come and the greatest revelation of His love was just around the corner because Isaiah was written approximately 700 years before the birth of Christ. So this was written 700 years before Jesus was born. Approximately. Okay, we're give and take. You know, I'm not... But having said that, in John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. In the, that's one of the I am affirmations. The premise for this sermon is both simple and profound. That in the beginning, God said, let there be light. From that moment, it has been his will that all creation serve as a revelation of his love for those he's created. Paul tells us that God's shown us what he is like by everything he's created. He said, the invisible things of him are clearly seen in the things that are made. That's Romans 1.20. Let me read that again. The invisible things of him are clearly seen in the things that are made. Look at the mountains. Look at the stars. You know, when I, when I get out there, I, sometimes I get full of myself. I'm, I'm the only one that does that, you know. I get all frustrated and full of myself. And, and then I, I, I go outside and I look at the moon and I look at the stars. And, and then I, 
get this awesome, and I get this, woo, you know, I'm like, okay, God, I get, I'm sorry, you know. I mean, if God holds the whole universe in, I mean, I'm smaller than an ant. But he knows me. And he still loves me. No hamburgers here today, buddy. Maybe next week. No, we serve set free steaks. We serve hot dogs. Anyways, having said that, the God is powerful. God is thoughtful. God is awesome. We see all this and more in creation. But God in all and above all is love. Man, he's love. Man. So all that life force behind let there be light, in other words, let there be light. Arise up and shine. Uh, you be that revelation of my love. Arise, wake up. It says, it says in Ephesians chapter 5, it says, Arise, wake up, O sleeper, and Christ will give you light. And he's talking to believers. <coughs> all that stuff yes you're worn out yes you made a mistake you know good people do stupid things to get locked up in prison don't let that hold you but you don't understand pastor yes i'm a convict too shut up don't let it hold you back nothing can hold you if god is for you who could be against you now you got to work listen you went to prison and now you got to work twice as hard to prove yourself well, wait a minute, you went to prison again? Well, now you got to work four times as hard to prove. Well, you went to prison again? Now you got to work eight times as hard. But if you do the work, if you arise, God will shine. I promise you. He did it for me. God, He did it for me. He's done it for me more than. If He did it for me, He'll do it for anybody because I'm a bonehead. <laughs> uh, God, there ain't nothing special about Pastor Ray, you guys. I am just living proof that none of you have an excuse. <laughs> if that's the truth, really. Listen, all this stuff, this life force, this revelation, all creation is now marshaled. It, 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 it's brought in with one single thought, with one single purpose. Okay, the crowning moment unfolding of this, this revelation. Paul tells us in Colossians chapter 1, verse 15, that Jesus was the image of the invisible God. Jesus. Jesus is the image of the invisible God. I love that. The firstborn of every... That, that, but that, that's called the doctrine of preeminence. Doesn't mean he was born. He's not a created being. He's God. He's God the Son. Didn't need, has no beginning and has no end. Always was, is, and is to come. The Almighty, if you don't believe me, read Revelation. Okay. Jesus himself said in John 14, 9, He that has seen me has seen the Father. Why would he say that? Because he's God the Son. If you've seen God the Son, then you've seen God the Father. Because you've seen God. Amen? Listen, on one occasion, speaking to a large crowd in Jerusalem, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. If, the, if light is the metaphorical revelation of God's love, then what is Jesus saying? If Jesus, is, Jesus said, I am. Remember what I am is, right? It's Jehovah. It's Yahweh. It's that I am that I am, what we call the tetragrammaton in theology. It's the all becoming one. I will be... The I am that I am. It's from Exodus chapter 3 when, when Moses was talking to the burning bush. In other words, Christ was the burning bush that Moses talked to. Huh? So I tell them, I tell Jehovah, that's the first thing I tell I say Jesus is Jehovah. And they're like, huh? I'm like, bring your own back. We'll talk and I'll show you. And don't bring your Bible. We'll look at my Bible. <laughs> you know. Listen. It, 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 there's a true unmistakable display of one thing that God wanted all along. Listen, if Jesus is the light of the world, if, in other words, if he's the revelation of God's love, 
than that than what God wants all along is to see that light shining in the darkness. But we have to arise first. You have to rise up in your spirit. You have to rise up above. You have to quit listening to all those people that think they know that don't. I'm going to tell you right now, if, if you think you know, you probably don't. If you think you made it, you haven't. If you think you is, you ain't. If you think you ain't, you might be, you might be on the right track. Just like if you, think you're, if you think you're sane, you're probably crazy. If you think you're crazy, you're probably sane. You know. L listen, God loves you. Yet it's possible that sin might have so wrecked us that you know wrecked our vision that we can't see God's love in the things around us. And, and, and you you can still be born again. You can still be going to heaven and have a place in heaven and still do little stupid things and and and, and let that burden of sin well, man, let, let it go. Listen, if God is willing to forgive you, how come you're not willing to forgive yourself? I can say, the hardest person I had to forgive was me. Because I was so full of pride. I was so full of arrogant pride that, you know, somebody would hurt me. And I'd do, I, I'd do something stupid like, you hurt me, I'll show you how to hurt me. Nobody can hurt me better than I can hurt me. Watch this. Stupid. I am stuck on stupid because stupid stuck on me, you know. Duh, you know. I could do a bigger bong toke. I could drink more bock. I could drink more. I could do more shots. I could do bigger bong toke. You know, pfft. who cares? Listen. It, 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 <laughs> listen. It, 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 if you can't see the, the things, the love God has for you, it, then the only time you're going to look to Jesus is when you're in trouble. And, and I see that in, in most people that, you know, like prayer. prayer. Prayer is the most wonderful thing. But why is it we don't pray more until we get in trouble? Until we, until we wind up in a circumstance where we, we're either out of money or we're out of time, we're out of patience, we're out of something. We're, we're, you know, we're all, we're all the way, we're at the end of our rope, and we're like, oh, no, oh, no, you should have been doing that at the beginning. Amen? Because the truth is, we're all the same, even though we're all so different. Okay. In Matthew, this is God's word translation, in Matthew 4, 16, it says, the people who lived in darkness have seen a bright light. Yes, a light has risen for those who live in a land overshadowed by death. And I wrote that down because that's, when, when I drive through San Bernardino, that's what I see. Some of the people that I've loved in this church, Pops, Pops, who did so well for so long until his daughter.